Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Chaplin. In this video review, we're going to discuss clinical predictors of C5 spinal nerve viability and panbrachial plexus injuries by Dr. Wu from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The brachial plexus is formed by five nerve roots that arise from the spinal cord and form all the nerves to the upper extremity. Pan plexus injuries, which are associated with high energy trauma, involve all nerve roots and are the most severe. There are limited reconstructive options to restore shoulder and elbow function, and this often utilizes grafting from the C5 nerve root. Determining viability of the C5 nerve root preoperatively is therefore an essential part of surgical planning and is based on physical examination, MRI, CT myelogram, and electrodiagnostic studies. This study evaluated the predictive accuracy of these modalities when compared to intraoperative findings. Of the 311 patients with a pan injury operated on between 2001 and 2018, they found a viable C5 nerve root in 43% of patients and a viable C6 nerve root in 12% of patients. This is confirmed with intraoperative somatosensory and motor evoked potential testing. While many factors were studied, modeling to determine the greatest predictive power using the fewest variables was accomplished with the following. An intact C5 spinal nerve root on CT myelogram and positive Tinell's test, which had an odds ratio of 5.4 and 2.6. Conversely, hemidiaphragmatic elevation on chest X-ray and mid-cervical paraspinal fibrillations on EMG were shown to be predictive of root avulsion and an inability to graft with an odds ratio of 3.1 and 2.9. The authors of the study should be congratulated for their work. While no factors correctly identify nerve root viability 100% of the time, this study will help surgeons determine preoperatively what reconstruction options are available and minimize surgical morbidity and unnecessary operating time from exploration of non-viable roots. However, as the authors state, this is only a guide. Ultimately, the decision whether or not to explore the supraclavicular plexus should be carefully evaluated and considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Thanks for watching.